Hey, what is up, second students? It is Wednesday. This is Merge. Man, I'm so thankful that you stopped by and that you're watching. Uh, tonight, we are finishing our Happy Easter series. Uh, and I'm so I'm excited to do that. A little bit sad because the series has been uh, really, really good for me personally. I hope it's been good for you. Um, but we're also going to be previewing here in just a couple seconds our series coming up starting next week. Uh, the series is called Love, Hate. Uh, and it's kind of a play on some attitudes and some feelings that a lot of people get uh, thrown into these groups. Uh, you may have used some of them, like haters. Uh, and so anyway, we're going to explore some of that and kind of a Christian response to that. So uh, I want you all to sit back and watch. We have a little teaser for that series happening right now. And so I am really, really excited about that series, and I want you to tune in next week. We'll be starting it next Wednesday. Uh, you can catch that right here. We'll have Devo material coming out next Monday uh, for us getting prepared to, to hear those messages. Um, but uh, for tonight, I want us to get started, and we're going to start with musical worship with Emily again. And man, she's been so gracious to give up her time and her talents, even in the middle of all this chaos. And so I'm thankful for her. I hope you are too. Uh, and so uh, we're going to be led by her here in just a second. Will y'all pray with me as we start Merge tonight? Let's pray. God, thank you for tonight. And I thank you for the people who are watching and being impacted uh, by this, by us being able to in different places at different times watching this, but uh, collectively coming together to hear your truth and sing your praises together. So God, help us to worship you right now through music and uh, let that lead us into a attitude of being prepared to hear your word. God, we love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. fake grass, plastic eggs, these things, chocolate bunnies, and people dressed as bunnies. 
And then there are the weird parts of Easter, like fake grass, plastic eggs, these things, chocolate bunnies, and people dressed as bunnies, which is interesting. But what does all this stuff have to do with Easter? And if this holiday is about more than candy and wearing uncomfortable clothes to church and lunch with your relatives, what makes Easter happy? You know, maybe like you, there have been things in my life that have made me feel like I was on my own. See, I, I wasn't the most popular kid in school. Uh, I transitioned between a few different friend groups a few different times. Uh, and I was, and still am, uh, an introvert. I was quiet and I really kept to myself. And I bet you could think of some things yourself, some things or times that caused you to feel alone. Now, None of these things probably seem as real as the loneliness that many of us are feeling right now. See, something that I'm learning is that all of us are getting tired of staring at screens and being kind of connected through digital communication, just like I am. There's only so many FaceTimes and things on Netflix or Disney Plus to keep me distracted from our present isolation. See, it could just be that it's this reality, or maybe there are different ones that you faced. Maybe it's your family has moved from one place to the other, or your friend group has changed, or, you, or maybe even you even lost a friend. Maybe you experienced a breakup, or you've had feelings or doubts that you felt like nobody would understand, maybe especially the people closest to you, like your parents. I think we all know what it feels like to be on our own. And when we feel like we're on our own, we start to believe things that seem true in the moment, but generally aren't. Maybe we think that nobody understands and will probably never will, or that we'll never get through what we're facing. Statistically speaking, almost half of Americans feel alone. And that's a stat that's actually before all of coronavirus and quarantining. Like I said before, I'm an introvert, and sometimes being alone is cool. I like it. But there's a difference between being alone and feeling alone. There's a difference between alone and lonely. And when it comes to loneliness, man, our generations are flooded with it. It probably started with mine at least being really highlighted, the millennial generation. And it seems to only have gotten worse as time goes on. Basically, the younger you are, the more likely you are to face loneliness. The reality is this. Loneliness tends to make us feel hopeless. Think about it. When we feel alone, we tend to feel overwhelmed. Overwhelmed by our situations and our circumstances, our feelings, our pain, our confusion. And here's what's crazy about that. Loneliness feels so bad because it's the way that God wired humans to be. I'm not saying God wired us to feel depressed or sad, but I am saying we're created and wired for relationships. You and I were never meant to carry the weight of what we feel or experience or worry about on our own. And so it makes sense that when we don't have that, when we don't have what we were created for, things just don't feel right to us. Because we're all there now, we know that times of being alone and even feeling alone is just an unavoidable part of life. So how do we handle it? Well, believe it or not, what's happened at the beginning of the first Easter and in the days that followed the first Easter experience can be a game changer for us when it comes to the overwhelming issue of loneliness. See, the very first Easter, Jesus left his closest friends feeling overwhelmed, kind of in a similar way. For years, they had been traveling together, doing life together, when suddenly they were all completely on their own. At least that's what they thought. And so while we don't spend a lot of time at Easter thinking about the time between Jesus' death and resurrection, I can guarantee you that his closest friends, his disciples, and other followers, man, they never forgot how difficult those days felt. You see, those closest to Jesus had walked away from jobs and family members and finances and safety just to follow him. And then he died. The future that they imagined for their leader, for their country and themselves all disappeared. So what did they do? 
Some of them stuck together, but many of them ran for their lives or hid from the people who killed Jesus. They felt, like us, alone. Now, we know how the story ends, but at the time, they didn't. So imagine their surprise and relief, honestly, at seeing Jesus alive again. That is, until he left again. <laughs> That's what happened. Jesus died, came back to life, and then he left again. But this time, their response was completely different. Here's how I know. A guy named Luke, who ironically wrote the book of Luke, he also recorded exactly what happened with Jesus' followers. He recorded their acts. So we call that document the book of Acts, even though it's more like a letter than a book. And so according to Luke, when Jesus left a second time, his followers didn't seem to think that they'd been left alone again. And so we'll get to the rest of what Luke said, but before we do, I want us to look at another document written by a guy named John, who was one of Jesus' good friends. John remembers that before Jesus was killed, he told his disciples that he was going away, but they didn't get it at the time. This is what he said in their final meal with Jesus and his disciples before he was arrested, starting in John 16 at the beginning of verse 7. It says this, but in fact, this is Jesus speaking. He says, but in fact, it is best for you that I go away. Jesus actually told his disciples that it would be better for them if he left. Why? Well, Jesus actually tells the answer in the rest of that verse. Look at it. Because if I don't, the advocate won't come. If I do go away, then I will send him to you. Jesus said that for the advocate to come, he had to go. The term advocate usually refers to someone who helps or comforts or defends others. And the same is true here. This advocate that Jesus is referring to is what we call the Holy Spirit. It's basically the spirit of Jesus among us, even though he's not physically present. He is the one who helps us, comforts us, and gives us wisdom and power beyond ourselves. And so fast forward through the death and resurrection of Jesus, right before Jesus goes back into heaven and leaves for the second time, he reminds his disciples of what he said in that last meal together. I want you to check it out. This is Acts chapter one, verse eight. Jesus says this, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses telling people about me everywhere in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Of all of the things Jesus could have reminded his disciples of, he chose to remind them that the Holy Spirit was on the way. The Holy Spirit would come and give them power to tell people all over the world about him. In other words, it was a reminder that even though he was leaving, they wouldn't be alone. Here's the best part about all of this. Jesus' promise was not just for the disciples he was speaking to at the time. When Jesus promised an advocate who would give us power and be with us, that was true for everyone who would ever believe in him. That means that you and I have access to that very same spirit. See, Easter is so much bigger than a celebration of something that happened 2,000 years ago. It's a reminder of Jesus' power and presence that are still available to us today. Easter can change everything about how we live our lives right now because of this simple truth. Easter means you're never alone. What if you and I could live with the same assurance and confidence that the disciples did after receiving the Holy Spirit? What if no matter how lonely or overwhelmed or misunderstood that we felt, we could trust that we're never alone. Let me ask it more directly. What if all of this is real? What if the literal, actual God who created everything and died and rose again is literally always with you? See, knowing Jesus' spirit is with us in moments like now when we're on our own, isolated, quarantined, means that we're never really alone. 
Think about it. You can talk to God at any time, in any place, for any reason. When you feel alone, what if you chose to talk to God about what you're going through? In the New Testament, we learn that the Holy Spirit even comes to us, and as we try to talk to God, He helps us with what we should say. What could happen if you chose to believe that God hears you and His Spirit is in work in you in ways that you cannot even see? In a day and age where so many of us are lonely, this might be the happiest news you've heard in a while. Because all of this is true through faith in a risen Jesus. I want you right now to think about this question. Right where you're sitting, think about this. In what area of my life do I feel alone? Then imagine Jesus, the same Jesus, who loves you and died for you, looking you in your eyes saying, you are not alone. You're not on your own here. We're in this together. I am with you. Maybe the best news you'll hear this week is that you don't have to imagine this because God has made it a reality through Jesus. And that, my friends, is why the Easter season is so very happy. Y'all pray with me as we close tonight. God, thank you. Thank you that we're not alone. Thank you that you are with us, that you hear us, you understand us, that you can identify with our struggles and our weaknesses because of Jesus, because of your son. So God, right now, regardless of what our perspective is or our thoughts are, our beliefs are, show us by your spirit that you are real, you are alive, and you are with us in your spirit. God, you give us your Holy Spirit through faith in Jesus, through believing in him as our savior for our sins, for our forgiveness. You offer us your spirit. God, help us to believe that and walk in confidence that we are never alone. That when it comes to loneliness, we don't have to embrace those feelings and those beliefs. We get to trust in you because you are with us. God, help us to carry this through the rest of this week. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Love you guys. Have a great week.